This is a brief overview of the PeerView version 2 beta program. Uh, this, this video will introduce the basic concepts of how PeerView operates, and then in a follow-up video, we will show you how those concepts are applied to the program itself. PeerView was developed at the Wellington School by John Cruzan, that's me, and uh, my partner here, uh, Jeff Turwin, who is our assistant head of school and head of the upper school. The objectives of the PeerView beta program is to share PeerView 2.0 um, with other schools that can help us develop the tool and uh, work out some of the bugs. And uh, in this, we're trying to engage uh, some schools in an early adopter program uh, so that the, the PeerView application can be utilized on a little bit broader scale here. Uh, the PeerView lifecycle is fairly straightforward as an end user you would register with the app, uh, which is a service has a uh, software as a service. Uh, it runs on a web uh, interface. So that means it's gonna run on a wide variety of devices and we don't have to worry about downloading it from various stores, et cetera. So uh, as, a, as a peer, you would register with the app. Uh, you would then join an organization and you do that by having a code that uh, connects you to a particular organization. So for example, uh, at the Wellington School, we might divide up into upper school, middle school, and lower school. So there'd be a, a uh, organization code and a security code for peers in the upper school to join. After you've joined the organization, then your duty as a peer observer is to set up your own classes to be observed. Uh, this configuration consists of you entering the classes into the system, in some way, we, we tend to have the name of the class include what period it's meeting, so it's a little easier for people that are uh, coming to observe you to figure out what it is that they're actually uh, seeing. And um, then in that configuration, there's an option for uh, teachers to ask questions of the observer. So you can create uh, targeted questions that you'd like your peer observer to answer for you. After you've set up those classes, then uh, you move into what is more the uh, use cycle of the peer uh, application, where you would arrive at someone's classroom, you would pull open peer view, you would select the teacher that you're about to observe, you'd select the class that you are observing, and then you would be presented with uh, a series of observable items that you would uh, click on and a few questions uh, to answer. Uh, before you complete your observation. That cycle will continue uh, until a new trimester or a new year comes along, in which case you might need to configure classes again. Uh, we believe that PeerView as an app facilitates peer visitations. Uh, at Wellington, we've gone uh, from very few to uh, almost 800 a year. Uh, it allows us to gather common observation data. So you as a school might believe that um, that uh, classroom delivery uh, method, so lecture, group work, uh, individual work, um, it might be something that you're interested in finding out how much time do we spend in each of those delivery modes. So you might designate that as one of your observables. And uh, over a period of a year or two, you will begin to get uh, a nice set of data that tells you that you're either over or under utilizing certain aspects of uh, delivery. And so there's a wide variety of observations that you can uh, specify. It also enables in administrative oversight, meaning that if you have a program that requires uh, all of your faculty members to make, say, 10 observations in a trimester, you can easily see who's ahead, who's behind, who has been observed a lot, who hasn't been observed a lot. It just allows you to step in and, uh, and control your observation program a little bit more easily. Uh, and it also provides teachers with analytics. Uh, you, may, you may believe that you don't lecture very much, but if 20 of your peers come and uh, identify you as lecturing 90% of the time, uh, you may want to make some uh, changes or have conversations with your peers about why is it that they perceive it as lecture and you don't, um, or uh, individual work and you think it's group work, et cetera. So the analytics can be uh, powerful for uh, teacher improvement. Um, when you're 
uh, ready to configure your school for the use of peer view, you need to register some administrators. Uh, those administrators will then be able to configure what is being observed called observables. And they can also configure organization-wide questions. So if you have, say, a strategic goal for the year and you would like uh, all peers to uh, make comment on that uh, as a question uh, in each observation, you can make that an organization-wide question. Uh, the peers also need to register with the system. And uh, once you've registered, they need to enroll in an organization and you can enroll in multiple organizations. So the system will prompt them to select their first organization and they do that by entering their organization code and a security code. Uh, after they're enrolled in their first organization, they can enroll in multiple organizations. So for example, if you have a crossover teacher that teaches in your upper school division and your middle school division, they may initially join upper school and then uh, add uh, middle school. Uh, splitting your, uh, or your divisions that way helps to keep the list of um, classes that you need to browse through and list of peers that you need to browse through a little bit more restricted to uh, 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 make it a little bit easier to find. And of course, they need to configure their sections, their classes. So what is an observable? Observables are owned by organizations. So this is a crush organization. This is not peer owned, it's organization owned. And an observable is a, you can think of it as a category or a topic that you wish to observe. And then an observable value is the thing that this person can select when they're there. Uh, I think the easiest example might be, say, teacher position. So you want to know uh, what, where is the teacher while they're doing their classroom work. And so we would call the observable teacher position, and then we would have values, for example, moving, standing, sitting. You might have additional ones like out of the room or something like that. So as an observer, while I'm there, uh, if I'm there for 20 minutes, I may uh, arrive and the teacher may be standing at the front explaining what the class is going to be doing, in which case I would tap standing. And then 10 minutes into my observation, uh, the teacher is now moving around the room, helping groups of students do their work. Uh, I would then tap moving. And uh, those items can change throughout, and each change is recorded in the system. So they're not a static uh, one-time selection. That you, you can update them as often as the situation changes. Another one might be activity. Is it a lecture? Is it group work? Is it individual work? Um, and you would, again, flip between those as uh, the teacher uh, changes up what's happening in the classroom. This is what allows longer observations to be valuable by themselves, where you can see sort of a time plot of what has occurred in a long period. Uh, but then statistically, if you have many observers over a period of time observing a wide variety of your classes, you can get a sense also statistically that you may spend too much of your effort in one of the observable areas. Organization questions are or questions that, I, as I said before, are assigned across the whole organization. These might be strategic or tactical questions that your organization is interested in having everyone answer. Uh, then, uh, the peers will see answers to these questions, but also the administrators can browse um, the answers to these questions and get an overall sense of uh, what the response might be. And then peers can assign questions specific to their sections. So uh, if the overall organizational goal might be something about equ equity between dealing with genders, and you in your own particular class might be interested in whether you are clearly articulating um, the, the purpose of the lesson. You might ask a question for your peers to specifically observe whether or not there's clarity of purpose in your classroom. And the peers can assign these questions across all of their sections or they can have specific questions for each of their sections. In the next section of, in the next video, we'll cover how all of those things come together in the actual use of the Peer View app.